Hey guys, Robert here with the Piston Slap channel and today's how-to video is going to be how to replace and clean your rear brake. Uh, we're going to be putting EBC double H centered brake pads as you can see here in the new package. Uh, about 34 35 bucks for a set of rear brakes uh, and you can see these ones are done. Uh, these ones got 6,000 on them so something for you guys to check really easy just walk around the back of the bike and uh, just look right in there and you can see the friction material is almost non-existent. Uh, anyway, in the video I'll go through uh, specs and stuff like that on how to properly do the job. How you do the job is up to you because it is your bike. If you don't feel comfortable, especially with brake systems, please take it to a professional. Uh, if you have any questions, the comment section down below, drop, a, drop your question or your comment or whatever you gotta say and uh, I'll do my best to get you a, a professional answer. Alright guys, what you're going to need to do this brake job is a standard screwdriver, a 5mm uh, Torx or a hex. Uh, you can use this to get it out, it's just a regular Allen wrench, but if you want to torque it down you're going to need this. And uh, a torque wrench as well, 3 inch drive, 12mm socket, a 14mm socket, 3 8 extension makes it easier, uh, 3 8 ratchet, Toothbrush, some soapy water, I'm not going to show you soapy water, a uh, tube to drain some of the brake fluid off. Oh, and uh, let me get you uh, the other tool that I use here, uh, a C-clamp. C-clamp is for uh, compressing your caliper. Um, when you're all said and done, you are going to need some dot four brake fluid. Um, you don't have to have this much, but uh, some silicone brake lubricant. Uh, anything will do and you can usually find silicone brake lube at a, like an auto parts store or you can order it at the motorcycle store your choice uh, Dot four brake fluid same thing. I uh, you know guys. I'm a big fan of Maxima racing oils, so I use their dot four brake fluid uh, A set of calipers make it nice to measure your disc brake rotor, but they are not needed uh, but they are like I said nice to measure your uh, your rotor and to measure your brake pads to see actually how much you have. Uh, so that's pretty much the list of tools you're going to need. So getting into this, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is remove this little plug back here. It's just a standard screwdriver and you just give it a little turn like that. Next up you're going to need a five millimeter Allen. Uh, you can use an Allen wrench to remove it. Uh, you will need a, a socket because if you want to torque this back uh, you'll need that. So. Go ahead and break that loose and just slide it out and you heard the brake pads fall. All right. There's one brake pad. So on this 800, and this may be a little different for you guys uh, depending on your year, uh, the back bolt's a 12 and the front bolt's a 14. If you're just doing a pad slap because it's an emergency, all you would need to do is slide that pin out and take this off. Get some room in that caliper so you can bring it up like that and get your pad out. I couldn't slide it out obviously. I didn't realize there were little nubs on here. Uh, so we got the rear bolt out. The next is going to be the front bolt. The front bolt on this bike is a 14 millimeter so just be careful you don't get caught up in your ABS line right here bring you guys it's kind of close right there with that so just make sure you don't pinch it really simple service uh, um, something that you know just get to know your bike a little bit uh, I feel that if you wrench on it you can see uh, you're probably wondering why is there grease on this one? Why is that? Uh, the reason being is this caliper will actually slide as things wear and move. It slides back and forth. So that's why I had uh, that brake silicone lube. We'll wipe this off, get it nice and clean, and put fresh lube on there. That way it'll keep that pin from seizing or binding. Plus if there's any dirt or debris from over the the years uh, we'll get a chance to get that out and there is one here's the other other pin 
and uh, I'll, I'll clean this off before I pop it out but basically you just push on it and it just pop out the end of the thing and then up in here is a rattle clip I don't know if you guys can see that this piece right up in here again we're gonna clean this piston puck before we shove it back into the the caliper so uh, let's get on to that all right so I'm gonna try to keep this guy in frame the whole time you can see this bike it looks filthy well it is filthy I've washed it a million times and it's still filthy but yes you know get in here it's like brushing teeth for your bike and it's okay if this piece of metal pops out don't don't panic it goes back in um, a spray bottle would be nice and you don't need to clean just the inside clean the whole caliper you know this is a part of your bike that you know it's not going to see the the everyday scrubbing you know for you guys that ride the the street and never really get your bikes dirty uh, but this bike's seen its fair share of snow and mud and everything so it, it, it's earned it. <laughs> if you got the ability to have compressed air, a little bit of compressed air never never hurt anyway. But uh, the main focus is right here. Uh, this gold, goldish colored bronze seal, or not seal, but piston. Uh, you just want to get all that dirt away around there because there is a seal down in here. And if you just shove that back in, you're just shoving all the dirt right back into your uh, your piston and your piston seals and stuff like that. And it's just going to cause you more problems down the road. So why would you want to do something? So I'm going to go ahead and scrub this guy all down and get her good and clean. And then I'll show you the next step. I'm not going to bore you to death with that. But as you can see, toothbrush, soapy water. All right, guys, this next step is uh, kind of a thing of mine. Um... It's not mine. It's just about anybody that um, does brakes. Uh, I've got it all cleaned up. It's not 100% yet, but I need to, to push that piston back to finish it up. I did want to say this uh, up here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There is right here the shiny piece. This is actually a little clip that the uh, the brake pad will uh, ride on one on each side so it doesn't hurt to pull that off and clean all the brake gun gunk out of that okay so we want to push this piston back in the hole we want it to be as clean as possible so before you do that you know make sure it's good and, and clean so you see how shiny she is you can look in there and see that you've gotten most of the dirt out of there so some guys, and there's no right or wrong way, I guess, because some guys will do it one way and some will do it the other way. Um, when you shove this piston back in here, you're taking all the old fluid and cramming it right back up that line. If you got an ABS bike, you're stuffing that all back through your ABS module uh, and back into the master. That could cause a problem if it, if it pushes a seal or something the wrong way. Uh, so what I do is I like to stick this on here, and there's you can put it on any way. This is a little, uh, just a little C clamp from a hardware store. Nothing special. I need a fancy brake brake tool to do this job. And basically, what I'm doing is I'm just screwing this down into the bore push the piston back in. You could stick a pair of channel locks on there but you just want to be careful you don't mar the surface. So get her all squared up. You don't need to tighten it down just yet. And then that little hose I was telling you about and the 8 millimeter wrench. Stick your 8 on there. Stick your hose on. And you want to keep this oriented up because air flows up so that way you don't get air bubbles back in your system because you'll know if you do your back brake will be spongy. Uh, crack the bleeder open and then just begin compressing the caliper by just tightening it up. And you can see 
fluid coming out the hose. That's going into the drain bucket. There's hardly any ease, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm just twiddling away on this thing. You don't want to force it. And once it seats, that's it. You don't really need to push it much past flush. Don't cram it clear down in there. So we're going to go ahead and close the bleeder. Notice I kept, sorry, <laughs> kept the bleeder always in the up orientation. So, so go ahead and just snug that up. Doesn't have to be super, super tight, but just tight enough that it's not going to go anywhere. And put the cap on it. It keeps the, uh, keeps the dirt and the water and all the other debris. Go ahead and remove your C-clamp. And now, with the C-clamp removed, you can access this inner rattle clip. So, let's grab it like that and just pull it out like that. Some of them are will have a directional arrow on them as to what way they go in. This one, not so much. It does have a way that it, it goes in, um, but it's not like directional, so to speak, like front to back. But there's a, a notch in the, uh, or a, a lump in the uh, caliper and that just goes in just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrub this clean with uh, the same soap that I cleaned the caliper with. And I'm gonna clean this all up in here where I couldn't reach. Okay guys, real quick here, and you can see how clean it really is. Remember that cavity up there was all grimy and grungy. And the clip that went up in there, you can see now it's uh, shiny. Shiny and new, shiny and new looking. It's not new. Uh, okay, so moving on. Like I told you, just take this and just kind of push. And it goes one way or the other, it don't matter. Just slide it out. And the grease on here is quite thick, like it's almost starting to dry up. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, wipe that and the other piece down and um, Okay guys, you can see here, here's the, the one bolt with the slide on it and the other part that we moved out. So you just want to take a rag, wipe them down. Stick your fingernail down in there and clean that, that groove out. Get all the junk out of there. So we're going to put fresh stuff in there. Same with this guy. Sorry, get out of frame here. So there you go, you can see nice and clean. That's just a big can of the stuff you buy at the uh, hard or at the auto store. You don't need a ton of this stuff, guys, just a little bit. You know, it you'll notice if you put too much in it when you stick it down in there it'll go in and it'll want to push itself back out so i got that one coated up you don't want to put it on the threads there's no need for it there because uh, the threads are actually holding it tight and then this next piece so this piece you just smear a little bit around like that and when you go ahead and stick this in there um, a lot of it's going to be wiped off by the uh, the seal, so it wouldn't hurt to take a, this brush and then just kind of put a little bit on there and then just wipe it on the inside of the seal as well. Like, you know, there's a little bit, that's probably about twice as much as I'm going to need. So it'd be easier with a little squeezy tube, you just squeeze it in there. So there's that. Those are the slides. Those are all clean, lubed, ready to go back in. Alright guys, so on your rotor, you'll find uh, usually most motorcycles will have uh, a stamping somewhere along there. It'll tell you what the minimum thickness is. So you spin around, look for it. Uh, this one particularly says minimum thickness 5 millimeters. It's kind of covered up by the, the tone ring for the ABS system, but uh, this is how I measure them. Um, I do realize if you have 
A really bad grooved rotor. This isn't the best way, but this rotor's pretty straight. And we're at 591, 5, 5.91, 5.92 millimeters. So uh, lots of life left in that rotor. Uh, doesn't need to be replaced. Uh, but when it starts getting thin in there, uh, you're going to want to have to replace that. All right, guys. So uh, let's get this brake back together. First thing we're going to want to do is put this guy back in the caliper. Like I said, there's a you'll see a little nub in there. So that little nub just goes on the one side of that spring. And you just push this guy in. And I will sit here behind you and just kind of work this around. See how I got it in there? Just by kind of doing that with it and just kind of push through. And you're going to see that lube coming off of it. That's okay. And then you want to push it all the way through so that it basically see now that it's in that area it's in there and then notice when I pushed it back out it didn't grab the there's an inner lip in there so you want to push it far enough that it grabs that inner lip so now you see where it grabbed the inner lip try to turn this sideways so you can see it so there we are Get that nice and nice and slick um, also, I would recommend taking a rag and wiping off any excess uh, silicone lube on there. You don't want that getting onto your brake pad surface. Plus, it looks nasty and tacky when it's all over everything. So, so we'll slide this in. Go ahead and start this bolt. All right, that one's just hand tight. So now what we want to do is stick the brake pads in. So here's a brake pad. This side, if you didn't know, goes. You want the coppery stuff with the letters facing out. Remember, we have to lift that up a little bit to to get it in. Knocked it out again. I just wiped this off with a rag. Yours may be really dirty, so it may be re required to kind of scrub it down. But you should be able to just push this through, lining up the holes just kind of as it goes through. Okay, so the pin right here that the brake calipers slide on. Uh, the torque spec on that from Triumph is 18 Newton meters, which is really, really low. That's like, it's down in the like 13 foot pounds, 13 and a half, maybe 14. So not a whole lot of torque on that bad guy. And obviously you can see I can't torque it because I don't have my bolt in there yet. So on this one we're not going to torque down just yet. We'll just start that guy. And that's it. That's your uh, kind of your brake caliper pad retaining pin. Uh, the plug that goes in there, believe it or not, Triumph has a torque spec for it. And also, believe it or not, I don't have a tool that goes that low. But uh, they're saying three Newton meters. So you want to see three Newton meters when it's that low? Just put a screwdriver in there and just give it a twist, you know. It's not holding anything if it falls off you're not gonna it's not the end of your ride all right next step are these bolts so the the littler bolt the 12 12 millimeter socket one uh, that guy is going to be 22 newton meters it's not a whole heck of a lot of torque and then the bigger one is going to be 27 newton meters. The bigger bolt is going to be 27 newton meters or as close as you can get. And that one's going to be right about 20 foot pounds. All right. And that's it. That's pretty much uh, 
all assembled now. Now you do remember we had uh, pushed that piston back in there and got the old nasty fluid out. What we need to do now is top off the master cylinder. Uh, that way we don't get any air into the system. And if you're wondering a little bit of play like that, that's okay. That's just the slide pins and stuff like that. That brake caliper is supposed to float like that a little bit. All right, so there is the rear master cylinder. As you can see, I don't. Uh, hopefully it shows up on the calip or on the camera there. Yeah, you can see it right there is the minimum mark. You can see my fluid is just above that. So you want to make sure you wipe off your your master cylinder, making sure there's no dirt and debris and whatever around it, and then unscrew it. You can see all the dirt from uh, from out riding. Set that aside. And just be very careful with this. Don't get that on your painted surfaces because brake fluid will eat paint. Uh, if you do, seal your system back up, put it all back together, and then just kind of spray it off with water because water seems to neutralize it and wash it away. So dot four brake fluid, if you're curious as to what your bike takes, uh, most manufacturers are usually pretty awesome about putting what you need uh, on the cap. So I'll give you a quick peek here uh, for the Triumph Tiger. So you can see right there, dot four right in the middle. So pretty easy. Dot four brake fluid, nothing else. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just push on the rear brake down here. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna push that down slowly and watch the fluid level. All right, so to wrap things up, just take the diaphragm and stick it back in there very slowly. We don't want to really add any more fluid because it's just below the full mark. And then just put the cap on. We didn't spill any fluid, so yay, awesome. And just make sure the cap's not going to come off. And that's it. Your brake job is done. Uh, one other thing, uh, before you go out and just jump on this bike and go for a ride, uh, Make sure that rear brake works. You know, it's gonna be a little bit of decreased effort with a new pad until it beds in. Uh, but, you know, just to make sure it does work uh, before you go out and expect it to work and then find out it doesn't. Um, and hopefully, you know, so from there guys, I uh, hope this video has helped you uh, get those rear brakes replaced if you need it. And if you have any questions or comment, uh, drop them down there in the section below and I'll do my best to get you an answer. So thanks for watching the Piston Slap channel. I'm Robert. I will catch you guys on the next one.